Hello and welcome to another episode of Spartan News. I'm Grant Dalton. And I'm Jeremy Greer. Lady Windermere's fan had a great opening weekend last weekend. Be sure to catch it again, or if you haven't seen it, see it for the first time tonight at 7.30 or tomorrow night at 7.30. Volleyball, girls soccer, boys water polo, cross country. What do these all have in common? They're all sports. But more importantly, they're all sports in which your Spartan teams are competing at the metro or district level tournaments in the next few weeks. So make sure to go out and support your Spartans. It's that time of year again, BHS. The time when we can all gather around the lunchroom, smiles on our faces, beards on our adolescent chins. That's right, BHS. I'm talking about No Shave November. And so far, aside from Jacqueline, I'm winning the friendly news team competition. Not so friendly anymore. And now to Jacqueline with a No Shave November theme question of the week. It's sure to be Harry. How do you feel about No Shave November? <clears throat> um, I'm gonna give you a try this year. You're gonna give it a try? Have you never done it before? Nope. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Hello! How do you feel about No Shave November? And are you partaking? Of course I'm partaking. How do you feel about No Shave November? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> really? I really would rather people shave. You'd have people shave? Okay. You're not gonna do it? No. Okay. <laughs> what are your thoughts on No Shave November and are you partaking? I could partake. Um, I really like it because it shows what people can do with their hair and what they can't do. How do you feel about No Shave November? Um, doesn't think it really affects me. Are you gonna do it? Why not? Yeah? Yeah, I'll have a little... What about you guys? A teeny bit of hair poking out. <laughs> How do you feel about No Shave November? I live a No Shave life. So you're not gonna do anything. What if you shaved <laughs> for November? No what if I shave for November? Yeah. It's already November. Um, how do you feel about No Shave November? I'm doing it. Yes. <laughs> How do you feel about No Shave November? I feel really good about it. Are you going to do it? Starting today? It's November 1st. Anybody that didn't start today is making a huge mistake. <laughs> Are you uh, partaking in No Shave November? I mean, I've already, like, I've already started. <laughs> I've already started. No shaving. However, I'm not going to like grow this up here. I'm going to continue to shave this. Why? I'm just yes. Yes, I am. Do you encourage it? <clears throat> Absolutely. It adds warmth. Also, mustache hair does a great job of preventing preventing bacteria and viruses from entering entering your mouth and nose. Is that for real? Yeah, for real. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> um, how do you feel about No Shave November? Um, really, really excited for it. Are you doing it? it? Looks like you started a while ago. I did. I think, I think I'm gonna keep up with it. You gonna do it? Yeah. Just like No Shave Winter? Absolutely. Awesome. Just keeping it real. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Go BHS. It's a great school. Action. Juniors and seniors, make sure to check out and register for the National College Fair tomorrow in Seattle at the Washington State Convention Center from noon to four. It's going to be a lot of fun and we can see a lot of the colleges that we're thinking of applying to and that uh, you guys can check out. Student Improv Group Not Applicable is having their first show of the season November 15th where Island Music Guild formerly was. These guys are hilarious and any anybody who goes will have the time of their lives. Plus, all proceeds go to benefit the class of 2014. So, that's just another reason to go. And now to Grant with a fantastic sports support with the volleyball team. Hello, I'm here with the varsity girls volleyball team. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? I'm Lauren. I'm Hannah. I'm Emma. So, how did your season go this year? Well, we are still in the middle of it, and we're going on to the Metro Tournament this Saturday to uh, 
see how we finish in the Metro League and then on the districts. It's been pretty good so far though, so that's yeah. good. Yeah, districts next weekend determines whether or not we go to state, so I'm hoping we can do it. Have you guys ever taken a team to state before? Yeah, we did in the 2011 season, so my sophomore year. We were so close last year too. Yeah, yeah. really close. What is your favorite part of a volleyball game? Um, well, I am... Um, winning? Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe winning. The, like, like the last game point. Winning. The very last, yeah, when you win. Mm -hmm. When we win. Okay. Yeah, I like winning. Well, what would you guys say to get other people to come out for and try to join volleyball next year? Like, what advice would you offer or why should people join volleyball? Because it's just fun and it's like one of the only sports that really relies on other people. You can't do it alone. So it's like you need to rely on a pass and then a set if you want to hit. And you can't do all three because that's illegal. So it's We're all super close. So if you really want like a family sport, you know, where you're just really tight with everyone that you play with, that's, it's the best sport to play. And when does the guys volleyball season start? It doesn't. It should. Soon, okay. but it doesn't. Okay. Well, thank you, Volleyball. It's been an awesome interview. You guys are super cool. And have fun at practice today. Thanks for that sports support, Grant. As you know, we have this next Monday off. Yeah. Woo. Woo. But in all seriousness, please take a moment this weekend to reflect on how our veterans have served our country and what it means to you. Thank you for watching, BHS. Now enjoy this special Veterans Day tribute, and we'll see you next time. I was born in San Francisco. We moved up to Seattle in 1931. I had lived and raised on Bainbridge Isle, which was pretty wild. We had chased each other around with slingshots and marbles. When we played in the woods, it, you know, it, it was serious. My dad had taught me how to shoot. I was an expert marksman, and uh, I'm a good infantryman. Come when you're called and you do the best you can, and when it's over, you get the hell out of there. With America immersed in war on two fronts around the world, John Bud Hawk made the decision that college could wait. Hawk enlisted in the Army right out of high school in 1943. In 1944, his first major action brought him to the French town of Chambois. German troops had been desperately pushing their remaining personnel and heavy armament east to defend their homeland. But there was only one way back to Germany, through a tiny gap known as the Falaise Pocket. Despite being outgunned and outnumbered, the Americans were determined to defend the gap and prevent the Germans from reaching home at all costs. Our, our mission simply was to stop everything we could from getting out through the gap. Well, the Germans had to stick to the roads to get out, and we cut them off. It was uh, the worst carnage you could imagine. There were a lot of roads were totally impassable with wreckage, so they had to try to come through the orchards. We were, we were attacking, and they were defending. And of course, to their advantage, they knew every inch of ground that we were on. We didn't know what was in front of us. We collected up back a ways to see what we could do. I was reconnoitering through the bushes, found a lone infantryman there with a bazooka, the rocket, but he's got nobody with him. I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm trying, trying to get these tanks that are in the brush over there, but uh, I, I got no backup, and I, I have to put it down to load it. And I said, well, I'll, I'll back you. And, and then I loaded and, and defended him. He started shooting and uh, used up all his rockets. The tanks that were in the bushes where he was left. 
Though he had managed to repel a small group of enemy tanks, Hawk and his group were still badly outnumbered. With visibility and uneven terrain working against them, the American tank destroyers were forced to a standstill at the edge of the orchard. Our position was we were on one side of a field back with the tank destroyers and the Germans were on the other side. This uh, stream bed, which was about 15 or 20 foot deep, was in the middle and there was no way a tank could get across it. And tanks behind us, tanks in front of us, with visibility what it was, the tank destroyers wouldn't see them. Can't see them, can't shoot them. Well, I could see them. I know darn well. You're not thinking really of the consequences. You're trying to think of a solution. If you were standing in the middle, you could see both ways. And I said, if I line you up, will you shoot? And then we'll correct. I exposed myself standing out there, trying to look like a fence post in the orchard. Say, go 20 feet to the left. Raise it up three feet, something like that. And these guys are good, they were good. They'd put uh, like an armor piercing right through a building. And uh, then they would put another one in right behind it, an HE. And work. The Germans were getting shot by somebody you couldn't see. So we knocked out a couple of them, and the other one backed off. And uh, it was literally the the turning point of uh, the whole battle. His unlikely aiming stake maneuver stalled the German advance. But for Hawk, the day's events were far from over. I'm I'm feeling a uh, really smart A. You know what I mean? Um, we chased these guys out, and uh, I'm hiding behind an apple tree. Uh, thinking fresh targets when sun comes in range, I can see them and I'll draw these guys fire on them. Well, I didn't see the one tank, so he shot me right through the apple tree. Literally through the apple tree and into my leg and mostly through my leg. Uh, to me, it was like getting hit with a sledgehammer. And I, I couldn't tell whether I had a broken leg or no leg or what. It knocked me flat, but I could. I'm either done or I can run like hell. Boy, I took off out of there like you wouldn't believe. Ran around the corner of a building and fell over another tank. Wham! Thank goodness for some kind of training, I was still carrying my rifle. I hit the ground and rolled over and looked up and there's a German looking out of the turret on that tank, standing probably the tank commander, up on top, trying to figure out what's going on too. Well, I recovered first and shot him, and he went plunk down in. I, I think to this day, I almost wish that I hadn't shot him. I don't know how I would have done it different, but to find out what he thought of that crazy American who's attacking my tank with his body, because that's what I did. I, I, I ran full tilt into that thing. I bet you could hear the clang for a mile. I recovered first and took off with this tank and one other one right behind me. And I'm headed for Mother, which is the two tank destroyers. They said I got about 40 yards away. Went zip down and, and down in the ditch. When, when the cannonading stopped, why, uh, they came down and picked me out of the ditch. And so I went back to the aid station and they gave me a super band-aid. And away we went, on into Germany. As a result of the battle in the apple orchard, a key area of the Falaise pocket was cut off. Unable to reach their homeland, 5,000 Germans were stranded and surrendered. Sergeant Hawk continued to fight in the European theater for five more months and was wounded again in Germany before being sent home to Washington state to recuperate. Within two weeks of his return, Hawk was advised that he would receive the Medal of Honor. On June 21, 1945, President Truman presented the medal to young Bud Hawk at the state capitol in Olympia, Washington. Two words I'm not fond of. One is hero. And the other one is winner. There are no winners in a war. I think the greatest way to give of yourself and what you have to offer is by teaching. What would you give for an answer if one of these bright-eyed little darlings looks up at you and says, Mr. Hawk, what's it like to kill somebody? 
That's a kick in the gut. And you have to have an answer for them. They have complete faith, you know. They're trying to explain that uh, the worst thing that can happen to a human being is to have to take the life of another human being. You will never, ever forget it. But you can if you must and you will. There is one reason that they can do that terrible thing. That reason is you. That's their only reason for doing that, is you. So you think about it on Veterans Day, because that's what it was. <laughs>